Hi, I'm Debbie and welcome to Book and Bujo. Thank you so much for joining me today as I go through all of my April readathons and let you know how I did. First up, I participated in Realmathon created by Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy. And for that, I did read 37 books. Unfortunately, Team Enya came in third, but it was still so much fun participating. All of the books that I read for Ramathon, I also read for my TBR and for the Magical Readathon. The other readathon that I participated in in April was the Magical Readathon, the Spring Equinox edition that is created by G at Book Roast. This is my favorite readathon to participate in each year, and there are multiple chances to participate as the readathon has little mini readathons throughout the year as well as a year-long one that's year in Aldia which is a choose your own adventure and then the biggest ones which are the spring equinox in April and the autumn equinox which takes place in August when you attend Aurelium Academy. I do have two characters that are attending Aurelium Academy and the first one is Ariel and the second one is Karasu. So we'll start with Ariel who did double major in Master of Elements and Feywild Cartography. So let's take a look at what classes Ariel needed to take and we'll see if she passed or not. For Master of Elements, Ariel had to complete Elemental Studies and that was Botanic Controls, read a, read a book with flowers on the cover. I read The London Seance Society by Sarah Penner and I did read that. For shapeshifting, form of a wolf, a wolf on the cover, in the title, or the author's name. I did read Wolf Spirit, which is the Priest of Titans series, and that is a little novella that takes place after the first book, and that is by Paul Moucher. So Wolf Spirit, Veil of Entropy is a novella that takes place, a little short story, after the first book, and we follow the alpha of a wolf pack that is trying to solve the mystery of why some of his wolves are losing their minds and attacking people and wreaking havoc. It gets a plague, so if uh, one of the wolves get bitten by one of the infected wolves, then they also get infected. So he's, he's trying to figure out how this plague was started and how he can stop it. For animal studies, you had to flip a coin, and if you got heads, you read nonfiction. If you got tails, you read a fiction book, and I did get tails. And I read Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. And then for astronomy, The Eclipse Effect, two or more E's in the title, I read The Red Scrolls of Magic, which is the first book in the Eldest Curses series by Cassandra Clare. And then for Conjuration, I had to read A Spirit Binding Spells, recommended by a friend. And for that, it was recommended by The Wild Sasha from The Howling Pack, and it was the book club book for the month. And that was A Master of Jinn, which is the first book in the Dead Jinn universe. So there are um, three little prequel novellas that come before this book, but this is the first full-length novel. I have not read the novellas, and I do want to read those, the little short stories, because it sounds like they're even better than, that, than the novel. So I'm looking forward to reading those. Then for the last one was Restoration, Oculi Cures, Close Your Eyes, Shuffle, and Point. For that, I read Witches, which is the eighth book in the Rune series by Edna Walters. And I'm very excited because now I only have one and a half books, so one book and then one novella to read after this one, and I will be done with this series. So the Rune series follows Rain Cooper as the main character, and the secondary side character are Cora and Eric, her best friends, and they are all on the swim team together. Since this is the eighth book, I don't want to do too many spoilers for it in case you want to read the full series, which is totally worth it. It's really good. So it's based on Norse mythology, and she finds out that she has powers and that there are Valkyrie and the Norns and all of the Norse gods and goddesses are real and they are around and there are immortal. So her best friend Eric used to live right next door but his parents ended up moving across town so a newcomer moves into the house next door and that's when interesting things start to happen and things are happening at the school and with the swim team and Rain is trying to figure it all out. By this book, she's got some stuff figured out. She still is in high school, and yes, she wants to be prom queen for junior prom. That's one of her goals. But there are other things so, happening as well and that take priority. She finds out that she may be able to help people with the different things that she knows and can do, 
And so that becomes a driving force for this book. So Ariel did pass Master of Elements with a total of 1,550 pages. So she also took classes to be a Feywild cartographer. And so that is on this other side. So let's see what she had to read for that. The first one was Quiet Thunder by J.P. Harker. And it was for Elemental Studies, book with flower on the cover. She also had the shape-shifting prompt for this class as well, so I had to read two different books for that, and The Form of a Wolf, so wolf on the cover, title, or author name, and for that she read Divergence Part 1 Into the Machine by E.B. Wolf. So Divergence is a sci-fi dystopian where we've killed the atmosphere of the planet and now there is a basically like a cloud city where they live in these, these little bubbles and there's quite a few of them across the country that you can live in safety and it's like a utopia or so those who uh, live underground like this gentleman here who live in the underground and can only come out at night when it, the sun is not out that's what they think and so they're scraping by trying to survive while kind of stealing from the stores of those in the cloud cities and it's really interesting it definitely had kind of a slow start uh i want to say by the third chapter, I was kind of ready to DNF it, but I mean, it's it's under 200 pages, so I'm like, I just gotta push through and finish it. And I'm glad I did, because by the end of the fourth chapter, I was intrigued, I was interested, I was like, okay, what's, what's gonna happen? It did finally grip me and hold my attention through the end of the book. So our main character is the son of one of the scientists that created this, um, artificial intelligence that was going to keep everyone safe in the utopia of the cloud cities. One of the partners of the father wanted to use it for his own purposes and so the dad took some of the information basically like on a flash drive so to speak and gave it to his son who was like four years old at the time. The son runs away tries to survive after his parents were killed. The son then lives in these underground cities trying to survive with one of the scientists that used to work with his dad who did find him and helped raise him and keep him safe. So next up was animal studies and that was to flip a coin, heads or tails, and she did get heads for this, which, this one, which was to read a nonfiction. And for that, I read Feeling is the Secret, 1944 by Neville Goddard. So this one was a little confusing when I first started reading it because it was just because of the 1944 in the title. This book is actually from like 2016. It's from the 2000s. So that confused me a little bit. But basically, it's the law of attraction is this book. So, nothing new, interesting, but eh, three stars. And then for Astronomy, The Eclipse Effect, two or more E's in the title, she read The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, and that was reread for me. Loved it. Highly recommend. So next up is Alchemy, Principle of Transmutation, Metal in the Name. And for that I read Camp Silver Oaks by Leroy Cross James. And can I tell you that this cover is just perfect for this book. So this boy in high school, he's been getting into trouble and he finally, it's the last straw. His parents are done with him. They're like, we don't know what else we can do. Can't even look at you anymore. Basically the last thing he did was set his high school on fire. <laughs> so instead of going to prison, the judge assigns him to a rehabilitation center, which is Camp Silver Oaks. So I had to wear my camp t-shirt. So I used to work at a camp. So in honor of this book, I wore my, one of my camp t-shirts, but anyway, so Camp Silver Oaks, this is a camp for basically prisoners that are juveniles to try and rehabilitate them and get them back into society as normal kids. By the time he gets there, he is just like, what is this place? Like there is no way all of these people can be this smiley and happy and excited for arts and crafts and eating s'mores, singing campfire songs and that kind of thing. And so he's, he's definitely struggles to figure out how to fit in for the next year that he's assigned there. There's also some back history on the camp back in the 80s and the 90s, and it kind of goes forward to then present day. 
Uh, he finds an old journal and reads back through another camper's stay while at the camp uh, before it was a prison camp, basically. Uh, it's, it, it's a mystery horror and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It just brought me back to the cheesy 80, 80s horror movies. So if you think to movies like Sharknado and some of those back from the 80s that, that are super cheesy, but you can't just not watch them because they're just hilarious. And yes, the, <laughs> the, the total B movies, you know, that definitely didn't make it big, but they're still fun and they hold a, a special place in your heart for nostalgia. <laughs> That's what this book is like. So next up we have Inscription, which was Glyph Flight book from your top shelf or the top of your TBR. For that, I chose Guards, Guards by Terry Pratchett, and that was really good. I enjoyed that. That's It's probably one of my favorite of the Discworld books so far. And then for Demonology, Type Impersonators, book compared to favorite. So this is, I, I feel like it's cheating a little bit, but not quite either. So it's more of like a favorite not necessarily just genre, but maybe favorite subgenre style of book, you know, a high epic fantasy. But some of my favorites are the Mistborn trilogy, the original Mistborn trilogy, um, Fate Mark series, Lord of the Rings, a bunch of those ones with magic systems and things like that. So for this prompt, I chose Words of Radiance, the second book in the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. I love this series. This is one of my top 10 series. It is just so good. It's so immersive. The characters are just amazing and I love them all. Kaladin is a great perspective. It's the thing I the thing I like about his perspective is he's he feels real. Like he's got that the depression side, the kind of dark side. He's he gets angry, he wants revenge, but he also doesn't necessarily want to take it because he wants to be a good person and tries to grow and change and do what's right. So I like that about him. Shalon is fun. Um, she's, she can be a little hit or miss depending on the scene that she's in at the time. Uh, but I, I, I really like her as well. The world building and the character, character development, especially with like Kaladin, um, is just superb in this book. It just continues to amaze me. And there's there's a great plot line through here. They have something that they're all kind of, each of the main characters are working towards something. And then there's an overall kind of theme or plot that's going on as well. Some may find this book a little slow, but I love character development and a, and a little journey because you can't have a lot of character development if there's a whole lot of stuff going on. It's, it's hard to really sit someone down and help them to grow if they're just constantly moving from this scene to that scene and this battle to that battle and all of that. So I do like those slow moments too. I do like that each of the books so far, I've read two of them, but uh, they each have multiple POVs, but there's a main one that they're focusing on. So The Way of Kings, the first book, focuses mostly on Kaladin's perspective, although you get other people's perspectives as well. And this book you also get Kaladin's perspective, but it focuses mainly on Shallan's perspective. So I'm sure the third book and the fourth book um, are going to be the same, where you have a different main POV and then still get other characters too. So Ariel did complete her Feywild cartographer class with a total of 2,200 pages read. Now let's see how Karasu did. So Karasu was going for Godseer as well as Scribe. For Godseer, Karasu had to take Astronomy, Eclipse Effect, two or more E's in the title, and I think for all four courses, they had to do Astronomy, so that was nice. Karasu chose Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood, and that was adorable. I love that book. It's just, it's so much fun and lighthearted, and it really is a nice palate cleanser, some, some place to just have a little smile and some sunshine in the midst of all the high epic fantasies that I read. And I know I say that all the time, but it's true. It's nice to have just that nice kind of lighthearted rom-com thrown into the mix. And then next is Inscription, 
So Glyph Flight book from Top Shelf, and for that I read The Bennett Women by Eden Apaya Kupi, and that is a modern day Pride and Prejudice retelling. And so we follow three best friends basically that are all attending Bennett College, and it was just really good. I, I loved the diversity of the book. So each of the main characters had a different ethnicity, which I loved. And then they also had different personalities, had different majors, were in different places in their lives. And I really enjoyed it. So next up, um, I did switch up the next two prompts that I had originally chosen because I got books in from the library that came in in time for me to read them for this instead of waiting. So. I did swap this next prompt. Psionics and Divinations, Cloud Study 101, Clouds on the Cover or in the Title. Originally, I was going to read Of Dawn and Embers by Kyoko M. The edition I had pulled up on Goodreads was like a hundred and something pages. I was like, oh great, that'll be easy. But then when I looked at the Kindle book I actually had, it was like 389 pages, almost 400 pages. So I knew I wasn't going to be able to finish it anyway. So when this book came in from my library, I was super excited didn't absolutely swap the prompts because there's also clouds on the cover for this book and that is Secret Project Number One by Brandon Sanderson, Tress of the Emerald Sea. I love that book. It was so adorable. It was really cute. Reading through Brandon Sanderson's Brandon Sanderson's inspiration for writing this book, it was kind of it was the Princess Bride. But what if the princess was the hero instead of the prince? It was so cute. I love this book. If you have not had a chance to pick it up, go for it. So we're following Tress who lives on an island of salt and the sea itself is made up of spores and her, the spores around her island are green, which is why it's the Emerald Sea. But there's also other islands. So you have, the re there's red, there's midnight blue, there's, I think there's a couple other colors as well. So it's, it's just kind of fun. One of the boys that she really likes is the Duke's son, which is the leader of the island. And he leaves with his uh, father and mother on a trip and he gets taken by the evil sorceress and is kidnapped and nobody seems to want to help him and so Trust takes it upon herself that she is going to go save him and so she sets sail and tries to find her friend and save him from the evil sorceress. Next up is Restoration, Oculi Cures, Close Eyes, Shuffle, and Point. So for this one, I originally had shuffled and pointed to The Exile, which is a novella after the second book in the Bound and the Broken series. And while I did read that book, I ended up swapping it for a different prompt that had a much larger epic book on it. And so for this one, I did actually put Trust the Emerald Sea, this book, and The Exile together and shuffled them around and pointed and I ended up with Brandon Sanderson's Secret Project Number 2. I think it's safe to say the name now. I think it's been out for a while enough, so I'm going to go for it. But it's the Frugal Wizard's Handbook to Medieval England. And I loved this book. I know there's a lot of hit and miss on this one. The most people thought it was good, but not great. I thought it was fun. So it reminded me of a movie that I love, which is super cheesy B movie that again is probably either people like it or they just don't. And that is Starship Troopers. <laughs> Cause in the movie, you'll be going along with the scene in the movie and all of a sudden they'll just cut into this like uh, commercial promoting. What is that? So a commercial, like a sponsored promotion for the military or for the government or be a good citizen kind of thing for Starship Troopers. And that's totally how this book felt to me. I'm pretty sure it's based more on Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but I actually haven't read that book. I did see the movie, but it's been a long time and I don't remember. It didn't stick with me um, what it was completely about, but... <laughs> but it totally had the Starship Troopers feel. So if you've seen that movie, then you know. But I, I did, I found this just funny and cheesy. So I guess cheesy is the best word for it, but in a good way for me. I, I love a little bit of cheese and some schmaltz here and there in my books and movies. <laughs> So we're basically following a gentleman who wakes up and doesn't know where he is or what's going on necessarily. So a little bit of amnesia that goes away somewhat quickly and finds himself in medieval 
England somewhere and has to figure out what's going on. He finds some pages to a book and realizes that it's this handbook to try how to survive middle medieval England and so he's trying to find all the pages to it to try and figure out what's going on how to get out of there how to survive and all of that and it's just it's cute it's almost a middle grade feel written more for older adults I don't know it was cute I enjoyed it and then conjuration spirit binding spells recommended by a friend and for that I read pyramids Discworld book number seven by Terry Pratchett, and this was recommended to me by Literary Diversions for the Around the Disc in 800 read-along. And then Demonology, Type Impersonators, Compared to Favorite Book, and this one is Midnight Tides, Malazan Book of the Fallen number five by Steven Erickson, and again, it's a grimdark, uh, high epic fantasy. This reminded me a lot of the feel of the Fate Marked series by David Estes, which I absolutely love. And the last class is Lore, The Legend of Dia, Book with a Map. And it's really hard to find a book with a map when all your books are ebooks, because you don't want to open every single one of them to see if there's a map in the front. It's a lot easier when you have a physical book, but I did find one. And that is, this is where I moved, The Exile by Ryan Cahill. And this is the Bound of the Broken series, and it's the novella after the second book. And there is a map. Very excited. It was a very good book. I really liked this book. I love the series just in general. So in The Exile, we are following Dane Atera, who is one of the characters that is in the second book of the Bound of the Broken series. And we get a lot more of the backstory on him and we get to figure out why he is who he is and why we need to know who he is and why we care. We go back quite a few years to him at his home and finds out what brought him into exile away from his home and his vow to get back to his family that is still in Volterra. All right, so Karasu did complete his Godseer class with not a moment to spare. Um, I was reading Tress of the Emerald Sea all the way up to the last possible minute. I finally finished the end of it right at the last minute. <laughs> but uh, he had a total of 2,946 pages for his Godseer prompt. So next up we have a scribe prompt. And for that, he started with Elemental Studies, Botanical Controls, Flowers on the Cover, and I read I Can Do It by Louise Hay. And this one is a, is a short uh, nonfiction book that is full of affirmations and how to find that happy place, you know, just ways to build up your confidence, what affirmations are and how to use them and examples of different affirmations. So it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. And then Inscription, Glyph, Flight, book on your top shelf or top of your TBR and that is A Psalm of Life by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and this has actually been on top of my audiobook list of a book I've wanted to read for a while. I mean it's it's a poem it was 34 pages but it was it was really nice and uplifting and very heartwarming and heartfelt and uh, very well written. I highly recommend reading it. It doesn't take you very long maybe half hour hour of your day depending on how slow you want to go through it and if you want to really absorb each line. I actually went through it twice. Uh, I went through it towards the beginning of the month and then I went back through it again towards the end of the month just to, to refresh my memory and yeah it was really good. And then spells and incant incantations, so spell magical missiles, target length 389 to 415 pages. Now this one was really hard to find. I am amazed at how many books, most of my books are over 450 pages or they're under 350 pages so having that in between spot it was really hard to find but I did find one and that was The Hidden Oracle which is the Trials of Apollo book one by Rick Riordan. I was very excited to get back into the Percy Jackson universe or the Riordan verse I think is what some people call it <laughs> but it was great because you have Percy Jackson makes a cameo appearance in the book and you have some, some Nico D'Angelo is in there you get to see him and get to go back into Camp Half-Blood and oh it was just great it was like coming home after vacation and getting to use your own pillow again you know um, yeah it was it was great I really enjoyed it. So then we had Restoration 
Oculi Cures, Close Eyes, Shuffle, and Point. And for this one, I ended up with The Case of Lady Sanix by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And this one was another really short story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It was only 24 pages, but oh my gosh, was it interesting. Yeah, I would say it's a gothic horror mystery. So there's a doctor and he is having an affair with a married woman, Lady Sanix. So he's getting ready to meet her that evening. And he has an emergency case of this gentleman who is very wealthy and is willing to pay any amount possible to get him to come and see to his wife who needs medical attention right away. But he's supposed to be meeting with Lady Sanix and he's not sure if he wants to do this, even though it is a lot of money, but he wants to go see Lady Sanix. And so, yeah, very short, really interesting. Not necessarily what I was expecting out of the book, but I was very pleasantly surprised. It was very intriguing. And then the last book for Scribe, only five classes, so that was a really short course, it was Lore, The Legend of Dia, Book with a Map. And for this, I read The Dragon Reborn, which is the third book in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, and I liked this one. So I think my favorite thing about this book compared to the other two was we had different perspectives. So we weren't in Rand's head the whole time, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think Rand's a great character and I like him, but I don't necessarily like seeing everything through his eyes all the time. So it was great to be able to get into Perrin's head and Matt's head and Egwene and Nynaeve and into their perspectives more. So that was great. Definitely rated this book higher than the other two just for that aspect alone. It was great to get into other perspectives and see other people's point of views besides just Rand. So Karasu did pass his Ascribe course with a total of 1,228 pages. So there's also a side quest for Aurelium Academy and that involved one, the alchemy professor. And I don't want to say a whole lot because it's going to go on for the rest of the year. You have the, the rest of the year to complete this quest, which I probably should have done, but of course I can't leave it alone. I can't leave it just sitting there waiting. So I had to complete the quest too, which uh, made me scramble a bit more for some of my other books because I was starting to get behind quite a bit. Uh, but I had a whole whole lot of fun with it and it was another choose your own adventure so so you basically got a clue and you got to choose this or this and from there you then chose this or that and then from there you chose this or that and some of the choices were the incorrect answer to the mystery and so you had to go back and try again it was super fun so ariel did complete the quest and then karasu learned from ariel's mistakes and we'll be able to get through the quest a little bit faster but i did decide to make sure i finished all of the coursework first before i finished the quest so karasu do, does still have a couple of more books to go before he finishes but some of the books that i read for that for Ariel, she read Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare, Burnout by Emily and Amelia Nagasaki, Saga Volume 3 by, by Brian K. Vaughn, Accidentally Married, another good palate cleanser rom-com, uh, by Victoria Lesky, uh, The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. So some of these are pretty short, like that was 31 pages. The Einstein Theory of Relativity by Hendrik A. Lawrence. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Volume 4 by Jordi Belair, as well as the, Bo the Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie McKeskey. And then Karasu, he did get through A Midsummer's Night's Dream by William Shakespeare, Tropic Thrills by Erica Golsky, Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, and The Mystery of the Tree Stump Ghost, The Whisker Sisters Number 2 by Miss Patty. This one's translated from the French. Convenience Store Woman is translated from Japanese. It was fun to read a couple of translated books this month, this past month as well. But the mystery of the tree stump ghost. So I read the first Whisker Sisters book uh, last year for Aurelium. And it was all right. It's a kid's book. It was okay. But I do have to say that this second book was a lot better. I enjoyed it a lot more. It reminded me of, let's see if I can find it. It reminded me of the Berenstein Bears, Bears in the Night, this book. Uh, it had that same kind of like fun, spooky feel to it. And it was just 
adorable. The artwork is great and it's super fun. So you're following the Whisker Sisters whose grandfather is kind of overseas at the Creatures of the Forest and they are trying to solve the mystery of the ghost that is at the tree stump and it's just a lot of fun. So I have do have two more books I need to read for Karasu to finish his quest. So overall, it was a very productive reading month for me. I had a lot of little books under 50 pages, but I also had a few over 500 pages. So it kind of made up for it with one over 1,000 and one over 900 pages. So it definitely needed those uh, 24 and 32 page books. <laughs> For the Magical Readathon, I did end up reading 37 books with a total of 9,394 pages. That was the same for Realmathon because all of the books that I read for Magical Readathon also worked for Realmathon. If you want to hear more about the books that I read, a little bit more in-depth uh, thoughts on them, as well as my stats for April, look out for my April wrap-up video, which will be coming out soon. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Did you participate in any readathons in April? Are you participating in any in May? What was your favorite book for the month? Leave a star emoji in the comments to let me know you were here. And until next time, bye!